What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to work on the addition function for a calculator with Kivi and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to work on the addition function for a calculator. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Monday morning here in Vegas, the day after the long Thanksgiving holiday. Hope you guys had a great holiday weekend if you celebrated Thanksgiving. If not, hope you had a great holiday. In this video, like I said, we're going to work on the addition function. So we got 99 plus 1, we hit equal to, boom, it hits 100. So we can go 9 plus 3, 12 plus 56, 68, whatever. So that's what we're going to work on in this video. So I've got our calc.py file and calc.kv file from the last video. If you didn't see that video, check the link in the comment section below for the playlist. And the first thing I'm going to do is head over here and anytime we press a button, for instance, well, a number button, at least, we want to pass that number into a function on our in our Python file and then do something with it. Right. So start out with this one. And I'm just going to go on underscore press like we've done before. Let's go root dot and uh, let's call this button underscore press because it's very original, very original name. And let's just pass in seven. Right. So this is the seven key, the seven button. We're just going to pass in the number seven into this function. Now we haven't created this function yet. We'll do that in just a second. So I can just copy this and we can come through here and let's just for each of these, I know this is very exciting, but we'll just sort of paste this in. So we've got nine There's probably a faster way to do this, but it's Monday morning. So we're just going to kind of manually plow through this here. So this is going to be five and this will be six, put a little space after each one just for fun. <laughs> one, almost done. Uh, this one will be two. And there we go. So what this one will be, it, it will be three. <laughs> and then we've got some more. And let's also do zero for now. And uh, we'll leave the rest of these for later. But okay, we've got all these numbers. Now we've got this button press function, we need to actually create it. So let's head back over to our calc.py file. And inside of our my layout widget, let's comment this and create a button pressing function, right? Whatever. So let's define press button, and we want to pass in self and let's pass in a variable called button, right? So whenever we come over here and click on one of these, for instance, zero, we're, pre we're passing in zero, and that zero will be assigned to this button variable. And then inside of this function, we can do whatever we want with it. Okay, so what do we want to do with it? Well, remember our calculator when it starts, there's a zero sitting in the text box at the top. Well, if there's a zero, we, we probably want to get rid of that zero, right? It's just sort of there for visual purposes. It doesn't really do anything at this point. So we need to run a little if statement to say, hey, is there a zero there? So I'm going to create a variable that contains whatever was in the text box already, right? Okay, that is a long comment. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna call this prior, whatever was priorly, priorly, whatever was previously in there, we'll assign it to this variable. And so we get that by calling self dot IDS dot calc underscore input dot text. And you remember from the last video, if we head up to the top of our thing here, our text input, we give it an ID of calc input. So we're calling whatever the I whatever has the ID of calc input, what is the text that's in there? Well, whatever it is, assign it to prior. So now let's run an if statement. And let's uh, determine if zero is sitting there. Right? So let's go if prior equals zero. What do we want to do? Well, if it's zero, we probably want to get rid of it. We don't want the zero there most likely. So we can go we can just call this thing right here. Let me just copy this. So we can set that equal to nothing. And what else do we want to do? Well, let's say we press the nine button, we want nine to show up in the text box. So we need to add that there. So let's do this, I'm gonna add this as an F string. And let's just pass in button. So 
Remember this button gets assigned whatever the number of the button is that we click. So if we click the nine button, we'll get rid of the zero and we'll add and we'll put nine in there, right? So let's go ahead and save this and run it just to see if that worked. Let's go Python calc.py. So we can say seven, boom, seven appears. Now it, it doesn't do anything else because zero is not sitting there, right? So if we go back to zero and click three, it does something. So, okay, that works. Now we need an else statement. So we've got if, if it equals zero, do this. Else, what do we wanna do? Well, we wanna put, say we click the nine and the nine is sitting there, but we wanna say 97. So we wanna click the seven button. So we, the nine is already sitting there. So we need to account for that. And then we need to put the seven behind it. So it'll say 97. Right, so we can do that just by going self. Well, we can just copy this whole thing and paste that in there. Let's give us some space here. And inside of here, we want another F string and we wanna put whatever was in there prior first. So we could go prior. And then we also wanna put whatever the button is. So if nine was there already, so prior will become nine, this is, false, so this won't get run, but this will, and it will put nine here as prior, plus then whatever we click the second time, seven, for instance, or whatever. So, okay, let's save this and run it, see if that worked. So we can say 97, or 973, or 9,730. We could just keep clicking things, and they keep appearing on there, so okay. That works good. Now, if we keep going, you'll notice, boom, it disappears. We'll need to fix that, but we'll do that much later. Uh, we'll just leave that for now. Now let's work on the plus sign. So when we've, we've got nine here, say we wanna add three, we would click this plus sign. When we do that, I want the plus sign to appear right there, right? So then we can also hit three again, and then three will appear. So that's what we'll do when we click the plus sign. So let's do that now. So let's head over to our calc thing and let's let's look for our plus sign. And I'm just gonna do a quick search here. So here's our plus button, get rid of that. Now let's create an on underscore press for this guy. And let's go root dot, uh, let's call this add. Let's create an add function, right? So, okay, we can save this, head back over here. And let's come in here and let's create addition function. So let's define add, and we also wanna pass in self. Now when we did this button press one, we also passed in the button. We don't need to do that here because we're not passing in anything when we press the plus, we just wanna press plus, right? So, okay, that's pretty easy. So again, we wanna do the same thing here, grab whatever was previously in the text field, so let's just paste that in, and assign it to this prior variable, right? Now, all we wanna do is take whatever was previously in there and slap a plus sign to the end of it, right? So we could do that just by calling this. So let's say uh, slap a plus sign to the text box, whatever. So we could just call that self.ids.calc.calc underscore input dot text. And we can just set that equal to, and let's do another F string here because it's just easier that way. And what do we want to do? Well, we want to take whatever, well, we want to take whatever was previously in there or prior as we were calling it. And then we just want to slap a plus sign at, on after it. So we go ahead and save this. Let's run this guy. We can go eight plus, boom, the plus sign appears. Now we can say two, we can keep going, plus three, plus six, whatever, and we're good to go. So now we just need to work on this equal to. And likewise, we could do the same thing for the minus multiplication and subtraction if we wanted to. We could knock that out real quick, just right here. So let's go, let's just look through here for each of these. So here's the minus one. We can go on underscore press and let's call root dot subtract. Let me just copy this. And we can keep looking through here. Here's the multiplication. So we can call root dot multiply. And let's change this to a lowercase x. It's kind of bugging me. It looks weird. <laughs> and we can come up here and here's the multiplication. We'll call root dot, or here's the division. We'll call root dot divide. All right, so let's go ahead and save these. 
Now, just very quickly, we can just sort of copy each of these. We want one, two, three. Add three more. So let's see. This one was subtract. And then down here, we just want to slap a subtract sign instead of a plus sign, right? This one will be multiply. And again, down here, we want the, let's put a little star here. It's the shift in the eight key on your keyboard. And then finally, this one will be divide. And at the bottom of this guy, we'll put what? That division sign. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this and run it real quick just to make sure that worked. We did that kind of fast. So let's go nine times three, that seems to work. Let's go nine divided by three, that seems to work. Let's go nine minus, uh-oh, subtract. Let's see, oh, I misspelled subtract right there. Okay, so there you go. That seems good. Let's run this again just to make sure. So nine minus three, okay. And then nine plus three, oops. Nine plus three. All right. So now we want to work on this equal to sign. And we're just going to work on the addition one for now. Uh, we'll do the rest of these in the next video. But this is getting a little bit long. So, okay, let's head back over here. And let's look through here. And I'm going to just do a quick search for our equal to. There it is. And let's go on underscore press. Let's give this a root dot equals function. Go ahead and save this. Now let's come back up here and uh, create equal equals to function. And let's define equals. We want to pass in self, we don't need to pass in anything else. And just like all of these things, we need to know what was pre previously in our text box at the top, right? Now, this is going to get interesting because this could be a long thing. This could be 9 plus 2 plus 6 plus 9 plus 4 plus 106, or it could be 4 plus 4. It could be two things, but it's, it's going to be a string of text with a plus sign separating different things, right? So we need to sort of break this apart for whatever sign is in there. And like I said, right now we're going to do addition. So let's do addition here. And now we can we can determine if addition, if the addition sign is in this variable, right? And we can do that just by calling if, and we can go the plus sign in prior, right? So if there's a plus sign in there, what do we want to do? Well, we need to split apart this string by the plus sign. And so we can do that. We can call let's create a, a list, a Python list, call it number list, right? And this is going to equal prior dot split. We want to split it apart. What do we want to split it by? We want to split it by the plus sign, right? So this will now give us a Python list of all of the numbers split apart by the plus sign. So let's just print this out real quick. Num underscore list just to see what this looks like. So let's save this and run it. So we've got, let's say nine plus three plus two. We hit equal, nothing happens, but when we close this, we should see a Python list with nine, three, and two in it. And we do, we see a, a Python list right here with nine, three, and two in it. Now, check this out though. These are quotation marks, which means these aren't numbers, these are strings. So we're gonna have to convert them into numbers, into integers, and if we wanna do math, which we do. So <laughs> let's go ahead and do that now. So. We don't need this. Let's create a variable called answer and let's set this equal to zero. Or I guess we could set it equal to zero like that. So now let's create a loop. So let's loop through our list. So let's go four. Uh, let's say, let's call this number. For number in our num underscore list, we want the answer to equal answer plus our number. But remember, this number is a string, so we need to convert this to an integer. Let's go ahead and do that. And then when this is all done, let's just um, 
Let's just print out answer just to see if this is working. So, all right, let's go ahead and save this. We need we may need to fiddle with this a bit. So let's bring this over. Let's say nine plus one equals nothing happens. But when we close this, boom, it shows us 10 down here. So, all right, that seems to work. Now, all we have to do is instead of printing this to the terminal, we just want to print this to this thing, right? So let me just copy this. And let's just come down here and say, uh, print the answer in the text box. So we can set that equal to, and let's just go answer. Now this may not work because this is now an integer. So we're put, placing an integer in a text box. So let's go ahead and run it and see if that will work or not. So let's go nine plus one. Nope, we get an error. So we need to convert this into a string as I suspected. So we could just go string, wrap that in a string function. All right, now that should work. So let's go nine plus one, boom, 10. And that's it. So we can, you know, 55 plus five plus 10, what's that gonna be? 70, boom, 70, and just that easy. And we can keep going, 70 plus uh, 10, gonna be 80, right? Plus six, very cool. And just that easy. So again, just to look through here, when we press the equal to button, we wanna put whatever was previously in the text box in this variable, then we wanna split it apart. So if it's nine plus three, we wanna split the nine and the three apart by the plus sign. So we wanna pull out the plus sign and put everything else into a Python list. So then we wanna loop through this list and add the things together, right? And when we do, we assign them to this answer variable that we set to zero up here. And then finally, we just slap it back into the input box, but remember to convert it to a string first, because I guess the input box is like strings. <laughs> and that's all there is to it. So we went through a bunch of stuff in this video, but it was all pretty simple stuff. You know, we clicked the buttons. And so we're now assigning whatever was in the, whatever the button is to the text box. So if we press nine, the nine appears. Now we, when we press plus, the plus appears. And then when we press equal, it adds them all up. It figures out that this is a addition and uh, it does stuff. Now for the rest of these, we'll do the same thing. We'll do another if statement. If instead of plus, you know, we'll do minus, right? Whatever. Now the inside stuff, this stuff in here will be different for each one, minus multiplication and division. And we'll see why probably in the next video, uh, but uh, pretty easy and we're coming right along. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.